Some of the conclusions of this working paper from October have similar blind spots to that of the MIT study, but this feels closer to gaslighting. Uh, in one sentence, conspiracy theorists are stigmatized for misinformation. The next sentence admits an absence of direct evidence on mask effectiveness in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So I insincerely apologize for being so conspiratorial as to oppose community-wide medical interventions which have an absence of direct evidence supporting them. Appendix A, search for the preponderance of evidence that masks are crucial. Further below in Appendix B are a few rough attempts to visualize summaries of the 80 studies I discussed that, are, that were directly downstream of the 2020 MIT study citations. Quotes and notes from my search for evidence. Before I started the search, I had already read the WHO and CDC systematic reviews. Uh, this biased my baselines while looking for stories which are strong enough to start making an evidence-based case for universal mask mandates. The line from the MIT study was, quote, however, despite a preponderance of evidence that masks are crucial to reducing viral transmission, protesters across the United States have argued for local governments to overturn their mask mandates and begin reopening schools and businesses. This MIT quote cites three references. The first is the CDC main webpage for guidance on wearing masks. The second is the systematic review by The Lancet in June 2020. And the third is a study about Taiwan. So going through this CDC guidance pages, 24 references, one by one, maximizing fit for cloth and medical procedure masks to improve performance and reduce SARS-CoV-2 transmission and exposure, 2021. This study did not uh, compare mask use to non-mask use and did not explore the impact on viral transmission. Next is a JAMA Insights article from February 2021 that we're going to dive through the references of as well. It's titled, Effectiveness of Mask Wearing to Control Community Spread of SARS-CoV-2. Quote, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the efficacy of community mask wearing to reduce the spread of respiratory infections was controversial because there were no solid relevant data to support their use. During the pandemic, the scientific evidence has increased. Compelling data now dem demonstrate that community masking is an effective non-pharmacological intervention to reduce the spread of this infection, especially as source control to prevent spread from infected persons, but also as a protection to reduce wearer's exposure to infection. It later says this, a this aspect of mask wearing is especially important because it is estimated that at least 50% or more of transmissions are for from people who never develop symptoms or who are in the pre-symptomatic phase of COVID-19 illness, end quote. The above citation in the JAMA Insights article refers to an original investigation from January 2021 based on a decision analytical model titled SARS-CoV-2 transmission from people without COVID-19 symptoms. The JAMA article continues, quote, however, the observed effectiveness of cloth masks to protect the wearer is lower than their effectiveness from for source control, and the filtration capacity of cloth masks can be highly dependent on design, fit, and materials used, end quote. The JAMA citation referred to in this quote refers to an observational study titled Effectiveness of Face Masks in Preventing Airborne Transmission of SARS-CoV-2 from October 2020 that developed an airborne transmission simulator, which looks quite cool and effective for testing some aspects of mask use, but is very far from real-world situations. Uh, a few other significant real-world factors include touching, reusing, unsanitary temporary storage, like resting masks on public surfaces, back pockets, or rearview mirrors. These JAMA insights go on to mention and summarize many studies. The first involved 67 salon customers who all wore masks with no control arm. The second is from June 2020, titled, quote, SARS-CoV-2 infections and serological responses from a sample of U.S. Navy service members, end quote studying 382 Navy, U.S. Navy service members based on self-reported mask wearing and a number of other variables were studied. It says, quote, service members who reported taking preventive measures had a lower infection rate than those who did not report taking these measures, e.g. wearing a face mask covering 55% versus 80%, avoiding common areas 53% versus 67%, and observing social distancing 54% versus 70% respectively. End quote. 
Next, from the JAMA Insights article from November 2020, case control study of use of personal protective measures and risk for SARS-CoV-2 infection, Thailand, end quote. This studied 839 close contacts of 211 index cases based on self-reported mask wearing. Quote, we found the type of mask worn was not independently associated with infection and that contacts who always wore masks were more likely to practice social distancing. Several systematic reviews found no conclusive evidence to support widespread use of masks in public settings to protect against respiratory infectious diseases, such as influenza and SARS. We created 10 imputed data sets, and the imputation model included a case control indicator and variables used in the multivariable models, including sex, age group, contact place, shortest distance of contact, duration of contact at less than one meter, sharing dishes or cups, sharing cigarettes, hand washing, mask wearing, and compliance with mask wearing. It later says, the effectiveness of mask wearing we observed is consistent with previous studies, including randomized controlled trials, showing that consistent face mask use reduced the risk for influenza-like illness, end quote. That last line cites a study titled, Face Mask Use and Control of Respiratory Virus Transmission in Households, end quote, from 2009. That cited study ends its abstract with, quote, adherence to mask use was associated with significantly reduced risk of ILI associated infection. We concluded that household use of mask is associated with lower adherence and is ineffective in controlling seasonal ILI. If adherence were greater, mask use might reduce transmission during a severe influenza pandemic, end quote. But the Thai study did find positive results for hand washing often and wearing a mask all the time during contact with a COVID-19 patient. Quote, wearing masks sometimes during contact with a COVID-19 patient was not statistically significantly associated with lower risk for infection. Sharing cigarettes with other persons was associated with higher risk for infection. Compliance with mask wearing during contact with a COVID-19 patient was strongly associated with lower risk for inf infection in the multivariable model, end quote. This is one of the very interesting multivariate analyses which claim to find a correlation between mask use and reduced risk of infection, but is only based on 18 index patients and 1,050 asymptomatic contacts while trying to tease out countless uncontrolled variables. The next is a May 2020 retrospective study from China of 124 households with 335 people titled, quote, Reduction of Secondary Transmission of SARS-CoV-2 in Households by Face Mask Use, Disinfection, and Social Distancing, a cohort study in Beijing, China, end quote. It says, quote, The first part included demographic and clinical information of the primary case. The second part was mainly focused on the primary case's knowledge about and attitudes towards COVID-19 and their self-reported practices, mask wearing, social distancing, living arrangements, and activities in the home. The third part was about self-reported behaviors of all family members, as well as the family's accommodation and household hygiene practices from four days before the illness onset to the day the primary care was isolated, including room cleaning and disinfection. It goes on to say, this study was the first to confirm the effectiveness of mask use prior to symptom onset by family members, daily household disinfection, and social distancing in the home. Jumping again, our study has limitations. Telephone interview has inherent limitations, including recall bias. It would take about 20 minutes to complete an interview, and 95%, 118 out of 124, of the interviews were rated as informative by the interviewers. Jumping down, household transmission in the pre-symptomatic and early symptomatic period of COVID-19 is a driver of epidemic growth, and any measure aimed at reducing it can flatten the curve. Hmm. Jumping down, this is the first study to show the effectiveness of precautionary mask use, social distancing, and regular disinfection in the household, and can inform guidelines for prevention of household transmission, end quote. The three studies above all use self-reported data to try to gain insights on at least three different NPI simultaneously. Given how many uncontrolled variables are involved, these studies are interesting, but do not seem nearly large enough to, to contain life or death actionable knowledge. The next citation in the JAMA Insights article is a study from June looking at state mask policies titled, quote, Community Use of Face Masks and COVID-19, Evidence from a Natural Experiment of State Mandates in the U.S., end quote. It says, quote, 
Systematic reviews and meta-analyses of such studies have provided suggestive, although generally weak, evidence. The estimates from the meta-analyses based on randomized controlled trials suggest declines in transmission risk for influenza and influenza-like illnesses to mask wearers, although estimates are mostly statistically insignificant possibly because of small sample sizes and or design limitations, especially those related to assessing compliance. There's also a relationship between increased adherence to mask use specifically and effectiveness of reducing transmission to mask wearers. In one randomized con- in one randomized study of influenza transmission in infected households in Australia, transmission risk for mask wearers was lower with greater adherence. Further, the evidence is mixed from randomized studies on types of masks and risk for influenza-like illness transmission to mask wearers. For example, a recent systematic review and meta-analyses comparing N95 respirators versus surgical masks found a statistically insignificant decline in influenza risk with N95 respirators, end quote. This study of the states from June is among the most productive and compelling I've read so far. They claim to have observed mask mandates correlated with a roughly 2% reduction over three weeks on the county-level daily case rate not cases nor deaths. Quote, this study provides evidence that U.S. states mandating the use of face masks in public had a greater decline in daily COVID-19 growth growth rates after issuing these mandates compared with states that did not issue mandates. I didn't see this accounted for, but I believe many southern states were entering the first wave during this study's time frame, while many northern and or coastal states exited their first wave's plateau. This study does not have a full control without any masks. Finally, this JAMA Insights article cites a Danish study from March 2021 titled, quote, Effectiveness of Adding Mask Recommendations to Other Public Health Measures to Prevent SARS-CoV-2 Infection in Danish Mask Wearers, a Randomized Controlled Trial, end quote. The JAMA authors say, quote, This randomized trial in Denmark was designed to detect at least a 50% reduction in risk for persons wearing surgical masks. Findings inconclusive, most likely because the actual reduction in exposure these masks provided for the wearer was lower. More importantly, the study was far too small, i.e. enrolled about 0.1% of the population. To assess the community benefit achieved when wearer protection is combined with reduced source transmission from mask wearers to others, end quote. The Danish study mentions the CDC's May systematic review and another one by the American College of Physicians titled, quote, Use of N95 Surgical and Cloth Masks to Prevent COVID-19 in Healthcare Community Settings Living Practice Points from the American College of Physicians, version 1, end quote. That strays into the weeds of comparing different types of masks, but might be very interesting for many curious minds. All right, the January 2021 JAMA Insights article, after presenting a pile of very weak new evidence, concludes by saying, quote, with the emergence of more transmissible SARS-CoV-2 variants, it is even more important to adopt widespread mask wearing, as well as to redouble efforts with use of all other non-pharmaceutical prevention measures until effective levels of vaccination are achieved nationally, end quote. But it seems the authors found the data study randomized trial to be too small, with 4,862 completing that study. So that was at least 10 times larger than any of the previously cited studies used to support their insights. So I'm still unclear how the handful of weak studies cited here can overpower the conclusions of four systematic reviews. The JAMA Insights article also has a correction. Quote, the article was correct on February 22nd, 2021 to correct a typo that there were solid relevant data to support community mask wearing to reduce the spread of respiratory infections before the pandemic. That typo has been corrected, end quote. After making it through the JAMA Insights article, we finally moved to Citation 3 on the CDC guidance page. Back in the CDC max guidance uh, references, the next five studies in the row uh, compare different types of masks or mask materials. Then we get to a perspective published in the Journal of General Internal Medicine in July 2020 titled, quote, Masks do more to protect others during COVID-19, reducing the inoculum of SARS-CoV-2 to protect the wearer, end quote. This perspective piece presents a new theory. It discusses the potential net benefits of increased asymptomatic spread, which actually sounds closer to a strategy of herd immunity that one might have heard in the 2019 paradigm. Quote, this theory of viral inoculum and mild or asymptomatic disease with SARS-CoV-2 in light of population level masking has received little attention. So this is one of the first perspectives to discuss the evidence supporting this theory. 
jumping down, are theories based on the likelihood of masking, reducing the viral inoculum to which the mask wearer is exposed, leading to higher rates of mild or asymptomatic infection with COVID-19. No prior perspective has specifically focused on this link between population level face masking, viral inoculum, and increasing rates of asymptomatic infection with SARS-CoV-2." The above July perspective does cite some modeling studies. It also cites another perspective from April 2020 titled, quote, the time for universal masking of the public for coronavirus disease 2019 is now, end quote, which mentions that, quote, the debate on whether SARS-CoV-2 is airborne versus droplet is still raging, end quote. This known uncertainty should have reframed the entire mass debate and its uncertainty in a very different light from the beginning. It also cites publications from previous years which would have been covered in the CDC's May Systematic Review. The above July perspective cites a May 2020 study titled, quote, Respiratory Virus Shedding in Exhaled Breath and Efficacy of Face Masks, end quote. But this one will be discussed below. The, uh, the July perspective cites a November 2020 systematic review published by the Cochrane Library titled, quote, Physical Interventions to Interrupt or Reduce the Spread of Respiratory Viruses, end quote. It says that, quote, the evidence summarized in this review does not include results from studies from the current COVID-19 pandemic, end quote. So they reviewed roughly the same material as the CDC efforts published in May. Quote, we included nine trials, of which eight were cluster random controlled trials, comparing medical surgical masks versus no masks to prevent the spread of viral respiratory illness, two trials with healthcare workers, and seven in the community. There is low certainty evidence from nine trials, 3,507 participants, that wearing a mask may make little or no difference to the outcome of influenza-like illness, ILI, compared to not wearing a mask. There's moderate certainty evidence that wearing a mask probably makes little or no difference to the outcome of laboratory-confirmed influenza compared to not wearing a mask. Harms were rarely measured and poorly reported. End quote. Back to the July perspective piece. Quote, one model showed a correlation between population-level masking and number of COVID-19 cases in various countries but an even stronger correlation with suppression of COVID-related death rates. However, it should be acknowledged that this model could not account for all confounders that led to such low death rates in the regions examined, end quote. And that, that modeling study is titled, quote, Universal Masking is Urgent in the COVID-19 Pandemic, SEIR, and Agent-Based Models, Empirical Validation Policy Recommendations, end quote. The next study compared different types of masks and and homemade materials for masks. And the next study titled, quote, Asymptomatic and Presymptomatic SARS-CoV-2 Infections in Residents of a Long-Term Care Skilled Nursing Facility, King County, Washington, March 2020, end quote. And this uh, study does not uh, analyze anything related to mask use. The next reference in the CDC guidance is titled, Estimating the Extent of Asymptomatic COVID-19 and its Potential for Community Transmission, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis, this study does not mention the words mask nor face, but might be interesting for the subtopic on the risk related to asymptomatic spread, uh, which has been used to label entire populations guilty before proven innocent. The next reference in the CDC guidance uh, is titled, quote, SARS-CoV-2 transmission from people without COVID-19 symptoms, end quote. This does not study the impact of mask use, but, quote, this decision analytical model assesses the relative amount of transmission from pre-symptomatic, never symptomatic, and symptomatic individuals across a range of scenarios in which the proportion of transmission from people who never developed symptoms, i.e. remain asymptomatic, and the infectious period were varied according to published best estimates. Jumping down, under a range of assumptions of pre-symptomatic transmission and transmission from individuals with infection who never developed symptoms, the model presented here estimated that more than half of transmission comes from asymptomatic individuals, end quote. The next study does not study the impact of mask use, titled Speech Can Produce Jet Light Transport Relevant to Asymptomatic Spreading of Virus, end quote. But it says, quote, we use experiments and simulations to quantify how exhaled air is transported in speech, wearing a mask, as recommended as a mitigation strategy for COVID-19, should be expected to produce more symmetric flow patterns during exhalation and inhalation, localizing airflow around the face. 
The next reference in the CDC guidance repeats mask recommendations and talking points without discussing any evidence. It's titled High SARS-CoV-2 Attack Rate Followed Following Exposure at Choir Practice, Skagit County, Washington, March 2020. The next study in the CDC guidance is titled Exhaled Respiratory Particles During Singing and Talking, end quote. This study does provide some evidence of potential mask efficacy in a controlled setting without testing actual infections. Quote, the aim of this study was to investigate aerosol and droplet emissions during singing as compared to talking and breathing. We also examined the presence of SARS-CoV-2 in the air from breathing, talking, and singing, and the efficacy of face masks to reduce emissions. In this study, we define aerosol particles as having a dry size in the range of 0.5 to 10 micrometers. Although debatable from an aerosol physics point of view, a cutoff diameter between 5 and 10 micrometers is normally used in medicine for a classification of aerosol versus droplet route of transmission. Jumping down, wearing an ordinary surgical face mask reduced the amount of measured exhaled aerosol particles and droplets to levels comparable with normal talking. However, as surgical masks have a loose fit, some particles may have exited on the sides where we did not measure, end quote. The next study is titled, quote, Droplets and Aerosols Generated by Singing and the Risk of Coronavirus Disease for Choirs, end quote. This study did not study the impact of masks, but cites a 2020 study titled, quote, Face Coverings and Masks to Minimize Droplet Dispersion and Aerosolization, a video case study, end quote which evaluated, quote, the effectiveness of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommended one and two layer cloth face covering against three ply surgical masks, end quote. So compared different types of masks. The next study, again, compared different types of mask materials. Next in the CDC guidance references is, quote, respiratory virus shedding in exhaled breath and, eff and efficacy of face masks, end quote. This says, quote, there's little information on the efficacy of face masks in filtering respiratory viruses and reducing viral release from an individual with respiratory infections. And most research has been focused on influenza. J jumping down, our results indicate that aerosol transmission is a potential mode of transmission for coronaviruses, as well as influenza viruses and rhinoviruses. Our findings indicate that surgical masks can efficaciously reduce the emission of influenza virus particles into the environment in respiratory droplets, but not in aerosols. Jumping down, among the samples collected without a face mask, we found the majority of participants with influenza virus and coronavirus infections did not shed detectable virus in respiratory droplets or aerosols. Whereas rhinovirus, we detected virus in aerosols for 56% of participants, compared to 40% for coronavirus and 35% for influenza. For those who did shed virus in respiratory droplets and aerosols, viral load in both tended to be low, figure one. Jumping down, the major limitation of our study was the large proportion of participants with undetectable viral shedding in exhaled breath for each of the viruses study. Another limitation is that we did not confirm the infectivity for, of coronavirus or rhinoviruses detected in exhaled breath, end quote. The next two studies, uh, again, compared different types of masks or mask materials. The next study in the CDC guidance references is titled, quote, Potential Utilities of Mask Wearing and Instant Hand Hygiene for Fighting SARS-CoV-2, end quote. This study is from March 2020 using laboratory simulations instead of real-world conditions during community mandate. It had no control arm without masks, but it says, quote, with these data, we propose the approach of mask wearing plus instant hand hygiene, MIH, to slow the exponential spread of the virus. This MIH approach has been supported by the experiences of seven countries in fighting against COVID-19. Collectively, a simple approach to slow the exponential spread of SARS-CoV-2 was proposed with the support of experiments, literature review, and controlled experiments, end quote. The next reference in the CDC guidance is a commentary published in MED in January from 2021, and we're going to go through the references of this uh, reference. It's titled Uniting Infectious Disease and Physical Science Principles on the Importance of Face Masks for COVID-19, end quote. This study summarizes, quote, the evidence on face masks for COVID-19 from both the infectious diseases and physical science viewpoints, end quote. It cites a study titled, quote, Association of Countrywide Coronavirus Mortality with Demographics, Testing, Lockdowns, and Public Wearing of Masks, end quote, from 2020. This study is more interesting than most. It says, quote, 
To summarize, the duration of the outbreak in the country was defined as the time from the estimated date of the first infection, the earlier of five days before the first reported case or 23 days before their first death, until April 16th, end quote. But given the variety of case definitions and testing availability, it seems noisy to begin with such an unreliable starting point. Instead of starting the outbreak with a first officially politically defined case, perhaps it would be cleaner to use a proportion threshold like one case per million. For example, the U.S. outbreak would have started after our first 330 cases as defined here. Looking at figure two in this study with a simple mask analysis, given how many known and unknown variables are involved, I guess I don't consider an R squared of 0.28 as actionable enough for life and death decisions for myself or my community. And I would need to see much stronger correlation before believing that there was likely significant causation from the mask mandates. Quote, in univariate analysis, scores for school closing, canceling public events, international travel controls, and index of containment and health were significantly associated with lower per capita mortality. Policies regarding workplace closing, restrictions on gatherings, closing public transport, stay-at-home requirements, internal movement restrictions, public information campaigns, testing, and contact tracing were not significant predictors of mortality. Likewise, overall indices, likewise, overall indices of stringency and government response were not associated with mortality. A multivariable model in 169 countries found that the duration masks were recommended, prevalence of age at least 60 years, obesity, and international travel restrictions were independently predictive of per capita mortality. The model explains 66.6% of the variation in per capita mortality. At baseline, each week of the infection in a country without mask was associated with an increase in per capita mortality of 50%. By contrast, for each week that masks were worn, the per capita mortality was associated with a lesser increase of 12.6% each week. Jumping down in that study, on April 30th, 2020, we originally published the finding that the logarithm of per capita coronavirus mortality is linear and positively associated with the duration of the outbreak without mask norms or mandates. This key finding was recently confirmed using mortality data from June 24th, 2020 by, by Goldman Sachs chief econ economist Hatzius. Their analysis confirmed that for prediction of both infection prevalence and mortality, the significance of the duration of mask mandates on or norms in the model persists after controlling for age of the population, obesity, population density, and testing policy. Other work has confirmed that wearing masks during the pandemic can provide substantial economic value." End quote. As with the similar studies I've read, these are only focused on the first wave. I'd be very curious to learn how such multivariable not models hold up through a whole year. Through this two weeks to slow the year, there seem to have been many strong counterexamples against mask mandates having a significant impact. Here in Maryland, we've been under constant man mask mandates for a year, not just targeting a first wave spike without much perceivable legal fluctuation. Back to the January commentary, it cites the CDC's, quote, scientific brief, community use of cloth masks to control the spread of SARS-CoV-2, end quote, from November 2020. This document has changed since I first read it in November, so I will go through this CDC brief's updated references after completing the more direct MIT study references. The January commentary cites a study titled, quote, Arizona, January 22nd through August 7th, 2020, end quote. But this does not make comparisons with other policies or outcomes in other states. The commentary also cites a study titled, quote, Trends in County-Level COVID-19 Incidents in Counties with and Without Mask Mandate, Kansas, June 1 through August 23, 2020, end quote. This study is more interesting, though it does not try to control for many variables. Their trend lines paint an interesting narrative of declining cases for counties after mandates. The MIT study's words come to mind, quote, researchers have shown how interpreting data visualization is a fundamentally social, narrative-driven endeavor, end quote. It appears the mandated counties collectively spiked surrounding the executive order's effects, and the non-mandated counties maintain a steady, roughly linear rise in case rates. If one measured the total cumulative cases, then the mandated counties would obviously be significantly greater than the non-mandated counties. I also bet that most attempts to apply a single trend line for each arm of the 
experiment would similarly paint mask mandates in a very poor light. Before controlling other variables here, it appears mandated counties had worse net outcomes in Kansas during the selected time span. The January commentary cites a study title, quote, face masks considerably reduced COVID-19 cases in Germany, end quote, from December 2020, which says, quote, depending on the region we consider, we find face masks reduced the number of newly registered SARS-CoV-2 infections between 15 and 75 percent over a period of 20 days after their mandatory introduction. Assessing the credibility of various estimates, we conclude that face masks reduce the daily growth rate of reported infections by around 47%. The impact of face masks worn in public on the spread of COVID-19 has yet to be systematically analyzed. This is the objective of this paper. Jumping down, reference 13 is among the first to estimate the population impact of face masks of, on SARS-CoV-2 infections. The authors track the development of, of COVID-19 in three pandemic epicenters, Wuhan, Italy, and New York City, between 23rd January and 9 May 2020, and find sizable mitigating effects of face masks on epidemic spread. While their study offers important insights into the population effects of face masks, a methodological limitation is that estimates are only carried out in a before-after manner, with no use of a strict control group approach. This may limit the causal interpretation of results. Therefore, we follow the spirit of reference for and provide causal evidence identifying the population impact of mandatory face masks on the spread of COVID-19. Jumping later, we set out by analyzing the effect of face masks on the spread of COVID-19 for a comparative case study in the city of Jena. Our quasi-experimental control group approach using SCM, synthetic control method, shows that the introduction of face masks on 6 April reduced the number of newly registered COVID-19 cases over the next 20 days by 75% relative to the synthetic control group. Comparing the daily growth rate in the synthetic control group with the observed daily growth rate in Jenna, the latter shrinks by around 70% due to the introduction of face masks. This is a sizable effect. The introduction of mandatory face masks and the associated signal to the local population to take the risk of person-to-person -person transmission seriously apparently helped considerably in reducing the spread of COVID-19. Looking at average treatment effects for all other regions puts this result in some perspective. The reduction in the daily growth rate of infections amounts to only 14%. By contrast, when we focus on larger cities, we find a reduction in the daily growth rate of infections by roughly 47%, end quote. Personally speaking, I do not find these methods very actionable. There are a very small number of jurisdictions analyzed, especially without controlling for other novel policies while using a synthetic control method. The January commentary references a study titled, quote, Effectiveness of Surgical Masks Against Influenza Bioaerosols, end quote, from 2013, which says, quote, The results demonstrate limitations of surgical masks in this context, although they are to some extent protective, end quote. Finally, the January commentary also cites a few more studies which were already discussed above, so we move on. Back in the CDC guidance references, we've got another study comparing different types of masks. And then after that, we've got one titled Efficacy of Face Masks, Neck Gaiters, and Face Shields for Reducing the Expulsion of Simulated Cough-Generated Aerosols, end quote. This study says, quote, face shield and neck gaiters have been proposed as an alternative to face masks, but information about face shields and neck gaiters as source control devices is limited. We used a cough aerosol simulator with a pliable skin head form to propel small aerosol particles, zero to seven micrometers into different face coverings. Jumping down, unfortunately, the use of face masks and other face coverings by the general public can present challenges. People often dislike wearing masks and compliance can be low and inconsistent. Mask wearers may repeatedly don, doff, and adjust face masks, which can contaminate the hands and potentially lead to disease transmission, especially when the masks are reused, end quote. So this final citation on the official CDC guidance page did not provide any direct evidence that mass mandates reduce transmission of SARS-CoV-2. Now we move on to the next citation in the MIT study, which is The Lancet. This is by the COVID-19 Systematic Urgent Review Group Effort, SURGE, published in June 2020, titled Physical Distancing, Face Masks, and Eye Protection to Prevent Person-to-Person -person Transmission of SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. The Lancet says, quote, The findings of this systematic review of 172 studies, 44 comparative studies, 697 patients, 
on COVID-19, SARS and MERS provide the best available evidence that current policies of at least one meter physical distancing are associated with a large reduction in infection and distances of two meters might be more effective. These data also suggest that wearing face masks protects people, both healthcare workers and the general public, against infection by these coronaviruses and that eye protection could confer additional benefit. However, none of these interventions afforded complete protection from infection and their optimum role might need risk assessment and several contextual considerations. No randomized trials were identified for these interventions in COVID-19, SARS, or MERS. Jumping down, previous data from randomized trials are mainly for common respiratory viruses, such as seasonal influenza, with a systematic review concluding low certainty of evidence for extrapolating these findings to COVID-19. Jumping down, at the moment, although there is consensus that SARS-CoV-2 mainly spreads through large droplets and contact, debate continues about the role of aerosol. Jumping down. Although direct evidence is limited, the optimum use of face masks, in particular N95 or similar respirators in healthcare settings, and 12 to 16 layer cotton or surgical masks in the community could depend on contextual factors. Action is needed at all levels to address the paucity of better evidence. The final MIT reference we're going through here is a study titled Masks and Medical Care, Two Keys to Taiwan's Success in Preventing COVID-19 Spread, end quote. This is less of an experiment and more of an anecdote or case study from June 2020. It provides plenty of helpful statistics and timelines for Taiwan, but does not compare many of those statistics with any other countries, policies, etc. Because of this, I'm quite confused why the, this anecdotal information is one of the three citations selected to back up the alleged preponderance of evidence that masks are crucial to reducing viral transmission. This is definitely not compelling evidence which might overwhelm four systematic reviews from the past two years. Finally, we go through the CDC's science brief on community use of cloth masks to control the spread of SARS-CoV-2. This document has changed a lot since I read it in November, and it also showed up while digging through the citations above. So for the final chunk of this research session, I will go through any other relevant citations found here too. In the CDC brief, citations 2, 3, 6, 8, 10, 13, 14, 28, 34, 36 through 39, 43 through 46, 52 and 54 were already reviewed above. Citations 7, 15, 17 through 27, 29, 30, 32, 33, and 35 compared different mass types or materials. And then citations 57 through 65 are studies that look at the potential harms of mask use. While these safety studies are critically important to most mask debates, these are beyond the scope of this review in search of compelling evidence for the efficacy of universal mask mandates to review, reduce viral transmission. CDC brief citation one is from July titled, quote, the implications of silent transmission for the control of COVID-19 outbreaks, end quote. It worked with a transmission model without directly studying the impact of masks. Citation four is titled, quote, low cost measurement of face mask efficacy for filtering expelled droplets during speech, end quote. It says, quote, we have demonstrated a simple, simple optical measurement method to evaluate the efficacy of masks to reduce transmission of respiratory droplets during regular speech. In proof of principle studies, we compared a variety of commonly available mask types and observed that some mask types approach the performance of standard surgical masks, while some mask alternatives, such as neck, fleece, or bandanas, offer very little protection, end quote. This experiment did have a control arm without a mask. It tests for droplets, but not aerosols, nor specifically for SARS-CoV-2. I've always found such evidence pretty compelling, and I don't hear many people debating the evidence that masks reduce expelled droplets. It starts getting hairy one or two assumptions later. Citation five in the CDC brief is, quote, visualizing the effectiveness of face masks in obstructing respiratory jets which also did not test for viral transmission in uh, June 2020. Quote, while there have been prior studies on the performance of medical grade masks, there are insufficient data on cloth-based coverings, which are being used by a vast majority of the general public. True. At present, the role of droplet nuclei in the transmission of COVID-19 is not known with certainty, and the matter is the subject of ongoing studies. Jumping down, regardless of their size, all droplets and nuclei expelled by infectious individuals are potential carriers of pathogens. End quote. 
Citation 9 in the CDC brief is another droplet mass study without testing for SARS-CoV-2 titled, quote, face coverings and respiratory tract droplet dispersion, end quote. They find that, quote, without any face covering, we measure distribution of deposition rates comparable to those reported in the literature. When the mannequin wore any of the two face masks, we observed that less than one in 1,000 particles escaped for, for both speaking and coughing. Jumping down, overall these data demonstrate that face masks are highly effective at reducing exhalation of large respiratory droplets. As these droplets are likely to be the main driver of SARS-CoV-2 transmission, our data suggests that wearing masks can substantially reduce the probability of an effective person transmitting the virus. In this study, however, we focused only on the large respiratory droplets that land on the surface within a few seconds. End quote. Within that last quote, citation two is a reference to a SAGE paper in the UK from June, and citation three is from April 2020, which discusses how, quote, coughs and sneezes create respiratory droplets of variable size that spread respiratory viral infections. They go on to say respiratory transmission of this virus via aerosols has not been definitively established, but is possible under certain conditions, end quote. But dangerous coughs and sneezes would most significantly come from symptomatic people. And Citation 8 within this droplet study was discussed already above. Back in the CDC brief, Citation 11 is titled, quote, aerosol emission and super emission during human speech increase with voice loudness from February 2019. Quote, here we show the rate of particle emission during normal human speech is positively correlated with the loudness amplitude of vocalization. Citation 12 is another study on, quote, size distribution and sites of origin of droplets expelled from the human respiratory tract during expiratory activities, end quote, from 2009. These provide more evidence on droplets, but not mask mandates. Citation 16 in the CDC brief was updated in January 2021, titled, quote, face coverings, aerosol dispersion, and mitigation of virus transmission risk, end quote. This study does not test for SARS-CoV-2 nor transmitted infections. Quote, however, surgical and handmade masks and face shield generate significant leakage jets that may present major hazards. Conclusions, the effectiveness of the masks should mostly be considered based on the generation of secondary jets rather than on the ability to mitigate the front through flow. Jumping down, several studies investigating mask efficacy have been undertaken in recent months using different measurement techniques and numerical models. Yet due to the multi-phase nature of this problem, we still do not have a complete understanding of the flow and around different face coverings and their relative effectiveness in mitigating droplets and aerosol dispersion and virus transmission." End quote. Citation 27 is titled, quote, Professional and homemade face masks reduce exposure to respiratory infections among the general population, end quote, from 2008. This studied different types of masks in the laboratory environment. Citation 31 is a preprint titled, quote, Strategies to Minimize SARS-CoV-2 Transmission in Classroom Settings, Combine Impacts of Ventilation and Mask Effective Filtration Efficiency, end quote from January 2021, quote, as the global community learns more about the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, there is strong evidence that a significant modality of transmission is via the long-range airborne route referred to here as aerosol transmission. In this paper, we evaluate the efficacy of ventilation, mask effective filtration efficiency, and the combined effect on the two on the reduction of aerosol infection probability for COVID-19 in a classroom setting, end quote. It proceeds to extrapolate with assumption-filled mo mathematical models that are not tied to hard evidence on what levels of SARS-CoV-2 might be infectious. Analysis of classrooms is also distinctly different than universal mask mandates throughout communities. Citation 40 in the CDC brief titled, quote, Lack of COVID-19 Transmission on an International Flight, end quote, from April 2020, said, quote, Studies of airplane transmission are commonly biased by contact sharing exposure risks before boarding the aircraft. In our investigation, transmission may have been mitigated by mild symptoms and masking during the flight. However, the lack of secondary cases after prolonged air travel exposure supports droplet transmission, not airborne, as the likely route of spread of COVID-19." Though airplanes do have pretty unique fil air filtration systems compared to most environments. Citation 41 of the CDC brief is titled, quote, In-Flight Transmission of SARS-CoV-2, a review of the attack rates and available data on the efficacy of face masks, end quote, from December 
It says, quote, in-flight transmission of SARS-CoV has previously been demonstrated during this symptomatic but not asymptomatic phase of the illness. Jumping ahead, reported mass transmission events seem to be defined as greater than one secondary case. And it goes on, on flights A through C with mass transmission events, masking was not mandated in any way and, according to the published reports, was rarely practiced. On flight D, with 25 passengers PCR positive on arrival but with rigid masking, there were only two transmissions and one was seated in row 40 next to five index cases. Jumping down, even with the incomplete contact tracing and testing to detect secondary cases available, aggregate figures on in-flight transmission before and after masking would be informative. Jumping down, at present, based on circumstantial data, strict use of mask appears to be productive, end quote. Citation 42 in the CDC brief is from 2020 and does not focus on universal mask mandates in the community, but instead on the, quote, association between universal masking in a healthcare system and SARS-CoV-2 positivity among healthcare workers, end quote. Citation 47 is titled, quote, face masks and GDP, end quote. This is June 2020 research from Goldman Sachs that looked at a few things. Quote, the first concern is that the correlation between face masks and virus outcomes might reflect the effect of other unobserved forms of cautious behavior that are correlated with mask mandates or usage instead of truly causal effects of masks. But there are some reasons to believe that this type of bias is not a big issue for our analysis. Jumping down, states that currently do have a mandate have experienced a lower than average daily growth rate in confirmed infections of 0.8% in the past seven days, end quote. It associates the amount of time without mass mandates with infection cases and fatalities, but similar to another impact lag study based on the first case above, it defines the outbreak as starting with the first declared fatality, which also seems like an overly politicized starting point for data. It also only looks at a range of mass mandate delays from 0 to 15 days without longer comparisons with places with no mandates. Their third exercise also does not appear to compare mask mandates against a control arm. So it's also worth noting that it seems like the primary goal from a Goldman Sachs perspective here was to sell the potential to replace the alleged positive effects from lockdowns to the alleged positive effects of universal mask policies. But as the WHO and CDC systematic reviews report, compared to masks and basic hygiene, there was even less pre-existing evidence to support most other pandemic lockdown policies. Citation 48 in the CDC brief is, quote, face masks, public policies, and slowing the spread of COVID-19, evidence from Canada, end quote, a working paper from October. This paper is very interesting, but it seems to have more variables than participants. Quote, we've constructed, based on official public health orders and announcements, time series for 17 policy indicators regarding face masks, regulations on businesses and gatherings, school closures, travel and self-isolation, and long-term care homes. Jumping down, since many of these indicators are highly correlated with each other, we combine them into five policy aggregates in the empirical analysis, end quote. And the more robust variation, this study looked at 17 indicators and many other variables based on 34 subregions. The subsets, which might be controlled enough to make mass comparisons, would be quite small. This suggests to me that for actionable certainty, we would need much larger data sets to separate the variables within a highly correlated collection. Jumping down to the study's conclusion, quote, conspiracy theories and misinformation surrounding mask wear abound in social media, fueled by some individuals' perceptions that mask mandates constitute significant restrictions on individual freedoms. And given the absence of large-scale randomized controlled trials or other direct evidence on mask effectiveness in preventing the spread of COVID-19, quantitative observational studies like ours are essential for informing both public policy and the public opinion. Jumping down, we use both within-province and cross-province variation in the timing of mask mandates to find a robust and significantly negative association between mask mandates and subsequent COVID-19 case growth, 25 to 46%. Average reduction in weekly cases in the first several weeks after adoption, depending on the data sample and the empirical specification used. Jumping down. However, our sample period does not allow us to determine whether their effect lasts beyond the first few weeks after implementation. We conclude that mass mandates can play a powerful tool for at least temporarily reducing the spread of COVID-19, end quote. 
Some of the conclusions of this working paper from October have similar blind spots to that of the MIT study, but this feels closer to gaslighting. Uh, in one sentence, conspiracy theorists are stigmatized for misinformation. The next sentence admits an absence of direct evidence on mask effectiveness in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So I insincerely apologize for being so conspiratorial as to oppose community-wide medical interventions which have an absence of direct evidence supporting them. Citation 49 in the CDC brief is titled, quote, Decline in COVID-19 Hospitalization Growth Rates Associated with Statewide Mask Mandates. 10 states, March through October 2020, end quote. This is from February 2021. Once again, this experiment did not even include a uh, control arm. Quote, this study examined whether implementation of statewide mask mandates was associated with COVID-19 associated hospitalization growth rates among different age groups in 10 sites participating in the COVID-19 associated hospitalization surveillance network, COVIDnet. In states that issued statewide mask mandates during March 1 through October 17, 2020, Regression analysis demonstrated that weekly hospitalization growth rates declined by 2.9 percentage points among adults aged 40 to 64 years old during the first two weeks after implementing statewide mask mandates. After mask mandates had been implemented for three weeks, hospitalization growth rates declined by 5.6 percentage points among persons aged 18 through 39 years old and those aged 40 to 64 years old. Jumping down, sites in states that did not have statewide mask mandates during March 1 through October 17, 2020, were excluded from the analyses. Jumping down, the findings in this report are subject to at least four limitations. First, the model did not control for other policies that might affect hospitalization growth rates, including school closings and physical distancing recommendations. However, it did control for the dates of statewide closing and reopening based on statewide stay-at-home orders and business closures. Jumping down, this study supports community masking to reduce the transmission of SARS-CoV-2. It also demonstrates that statewide mask mandates were associated with a reduction in COVID-19 associated hospitalization growth rates among adults age 18 to 64 years old and might affect age groups differently, end quote. Citation 50 in the CDC brief titled, quote, causal impact of mask policies, behavior, and early COVID-19 pandemic in the U.S., end quote, is from January 2021, and interestingly tries to tease out many novel variables from 50 U.S. states. Quote, finally, we stress that our study is observational and therefore should be interpreted with great caution. Jumping down, guided by the causal model, our empirical analysis examines how the weekly growth rates of confirmed COVID-19 cases and deaths are determined by the lags of policies and behaviors using U.S. state-level data. Jumping down, our estimates imply that nationally implementing mandatory face masks for employees in public businesses on March 14th would have reduced the growth rate of cases and that of deaths by approximately 10 percentage points in late April, as shown in figure one. This leads to reductions of 21% and 34% in cumulative reported cases and deaths, respectively, by the end of May, with 90% confidence in roles, which roughly implies that 34,000 lives could have been saved. Jumping down, given the lack of experimental evidence on the effect of masks in the context of COVID-19, Conducting observational studies is useful and important. To the best of our knowledge, our paper is the first empirical study that shows the effectiveness of mask mandates on reducing the spread of COVID-19 by analyzing the U.S. state-level data, end quote. Citation 51 in the CDC brief is on the, quote, association of state-issued mask mandates and allowing on-premises restaurant dining with county-level COVID-19 case and death growth rates United States, March 1 through December 31st, 2020, end quote. This study is from March 2021, but again has no control arm without a mask. Quote, two outcomes were examined. The daily percentage growth rate of county-level COVID-19 cases and county-level COVID-19 deaths, end quote. Citation 53 in the CDC brief, it's titled, quote, Mask Wearing and Control of SARS-CoV-2 Transmission in the U.S., a cross-sectional study, end quote, is from The Lancet in January 2021. This study was largely focused on the effect of mandates on adherence to wearing masks and does, doesn't seem to have a control arm without universal mask mandate. Quote, although evidence suggests that masks can help curb the spread of disease, there's little empirical research at the population level. Serial cross-sectional studies were administered via web platform to randomly surveyed U.S. individuals aged 13 years or and older to query self-reports of face mask wearing. 
survey respondents were combined with instantaneous reproductive number, RT, estimates from two publicly available sources, the outcome of interest. Jumping down, segmented regression analysis of reported mask wearing showed no statistically significant change in the slope after mandates were introduced. However, the upward trend in reported mask wearing was preserved. Jumping down, we evaluated the change in self-reported mask wearing within the two weeks before and after the statewide mask mandates for 12 states, end quote. Then we have citation 55 of the CDC brief titled, quote, a cluster randomized trial of cloth masks compared with medical masks in healthcare workers, end quote, from 2015. This experiment seems quite well designed, but many assumptions are required to extrapolate efficacy to universal mask mandates. Quote, after providing informed consent, 1,607 participants were randomized by ward to three arms. One, medical masks at all times on the work shift. Two, cloth masks at all times on the work shift. Or three, control arms, standard practice, which may or may not include mask use. Standard practice was used as control because the IRB deemed it unethical to ask participants not to wear a mask, end quote. And our last citation to review in the CDC brief, citation 56, titled, quote, Contamination and Washing of Cloth Masks and Risk of Infection Among Hospital Health Workers in Vietnam, a post hoc analysis of a randomized control trial, end quote. This is from September 2020, using a, quote, part of a randomized controlled clinical trial comparing medical masks and cloth masks, end quote. This did more analysis on another study within healthcare settings with totally different risk profiles and standardized protocols that do not easily carry over to universal ma mask mandates in the broader community. So that's all the extra sources on efficacy cited in the CDC's science brief and the end of this citation research adventure. But here's Appendix B with summaries of references reviewed in my search for evidence. Best references categorized. Here I made another attempt to categorize and consolidate my findings through this search. To the best of my ability and available time, I tagged, coded all, the, all these studies with the strongest support to reflect some common weaknesses and features. If I roughly understood these studies and correctly converted my notes and re-skims into this spreadsheet, then this is a decent approximation of the quality of evidence that I found. Again, these are just my amateur critiques, and others who find strong evidence here should also review expert critiques for each study before citing it as compelling evidence to support any public policy. Personally, I would find studies most convincing if they actually studied a direct question at hand and do not have serious flaws in their experimental design. For example, to determine if mask wearing is effective in real world settings, I would like to see experiments with control arms and that analyze confirmed respiratory virus infections. To support universal mask mandates, I would also consider having a control arm as a minimum requirement for serious policy considerations. So the four systematic reviews discussed above were included in the 22 studies which might provide evidence to prove that wearing a mask is correlated with reduced viral transmission and infections. While those systematic reviews generally supported mask mandates, they simultaneously discussed how little evidence exists for those positions. This leaves 18 studies running experiments to see if masks are effective against respiratory viruses. 14 of those 18 have a control arm to compare the results of people without masks. Eight of those studies actually measured the presence of viruses and or infections in their experiments. Of those, only four studies also attempted to understand mask wearing in real world circumstances. All four of those studies relied on self-reported mask wearing and were very small for the number of known uncontrolled variables involved. Of those four studies, two claimed to find significant evidence supporting a correlation between mask wearing and reduced infection rates. Beyond the mask wearing studies, I reviewed 11 references that more fully searched for the efficacy of universal mask mandates. Of these, only seven used a control arm to compare jurisdictions without mask mandates. Most of these studies looked at a short time period, which excluded a great deal of contradictory evidence. One of the simpler studies showed far higher case counts in mask mandate counties, but was still spun into the new paradigm's narrative. All of the studies I found closest to the target also had countless under uncontrolled variables. There was even less evidence for most of the other novel policies of 2020, which were often studied simultaneously. So there were not nearly enough participants or jurisdictions being compared to tease out so many known unknowns and uncontrolled variables. 
Further away from the target, 17 references were different experiments to compare different types of masks without an unmasked control arm in their experiments. Another eight of the references discussed were commentaries, etc., which helped the narrative but did not really bring original evidence to support the new paradigm's theories. Finally, 11 studies discussed here, plus nine more skipped in the CDC scientific brief, explored subtopics tangential to the efficacy of mask wearing or universal mask mandates. So if that evidence was enough for a preponderance by academic standards, then those standards have no ethical place playing politics that significantly impact hundreds of millions of lives. If established institutions are so willing to mislead the general public about the evidence for or against universal mass mandates with decades of research closer to their claims, then how misleading should I assume they have been when also claiming consensus on totally novel topics of study? The next visualization here is a bullet list of the path of references followed through these citations. Similar source digging patterns can be used to understand many extraordinary claims for new paradigms.